Tonight on the docket, freedom and human dignity. Why the TSA gives you neither, but how you can take it for yourself. Like this program, popular Kentucky Republican Senator Rand Paul has long been critical of the Transportation Security Administration. Here he is back in June grilling TSA Chief John Pistol for submitting 16-year-old girls to invasive pat-down searches at America's airports. I think I feel less safe because you're doing these invasive exams on the six-year-old. It makes me think you're clueless, you know, that you think she's going to attack our country and that you're not doing your research on the people who would attack our country. I think you ought to get rid of the random pat-downs. The American public is unhappy with them. The American public is unhappy with them. It seemed only a matter of time before the senator himself would have a run-in with the TSA. As you know, this week, Senator Paul was detained at an airport in Tennessee due to what was described as an anomaly in his knee. He offered to be rescanned, but was told he would have to submit to an invasive physical pat-down instead, causing him to miss his flight. Unbelievably, the Obama administration claims he was not detained. Take a listen to this. Let's just be clear. The passenger was not detained. The passenger triggered an alarm during routine airport screening, but refused to complete the screening process in order to resolve the issue. In order to resolve the issue, Freedom Watch had Senator Paul on later that same day. Here is what he had to say in response. They say I wasn't detained, but they told me I couldn't leave the cubicle. And when I tried to leave, I was ushered back into the cubicle. So I kind of felt like I was being detained. Like I was being detained. Of course he was detained. He was prevented from leaving. He was prevented from boarding his flight. That is the very definition of being detained. But this is the kind of story that happens to Americans every single day at every airport in the country. The only reason the mainstream media mentioned it this week is because it happened to, uni to a United States senator. Will you get the same kind of attention when this happens to you? Here to discuss the ongoing violation of our civil liberties by the TSA, as well as the only candidate in the Republican primary who is willing to stand up to them and get rid of them, is Doug Weed, a senior advisor to the Ron Paul campaign. Doug, it's a pleasure. Welcome here. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. You're a hero to me. It's well, great very, to be with you. You're very kind. Thanks for joining us, uh, Doug. Uh, tell me why it is that the TSA has this kind of authority and why we, like sheep, let them do this to us. Because we're afraid and, be <laughs> and because we're innocent. I had someone in line, I overheard a conversation, a lady who was saying, this is disgusting, and she was really upset by it. The guy next to her said, Why, what does it matter if you're innocent? Uh, this is a very naive concept. Jesus was innocent. Gandhi was innocent. That doesn't mean anything. You know, uh, the Cardinal Richelieu, hundreds of years ago, has a very famous quote. Cardinal Richelieu says, Give me five lines written by any man, and I can have him hung as a criminal. He's making the point that when the government focuses on someone, if it has just enough evidence, it can prosecute them whether they're innocent or guilty. And that's what the U.S. Constitution is all about. That's what the Bill of Rights is all about. Just because you're innocent doesn't mean <laughs> that you could end up in a gulag somewhere. It happens all the time. Well, and you have to have rights, and those rights have to be visible vigilantly protected or uh, this whole society we've built uh, collapses. It used to be that uh, conservative Republicans were defenders of the Constitution and defenders of individual liberty and fearful of big government. Of course, as we know, it was under the administration of President George W. Bush that things like the Department of Homeland Security, the TSA, the Patriot Act, all these warrantless uh, searches, all these unlawful detentions came about. H have we begun to accept this as a normal part of America, or will the pushback by candidate Ron Paul and Senator Rand Paul and the type of discussions that we are now having and the many people watching us and no doubt agreeing with us, is that likely to have an effect on this? Yeah, it's, it, it, it's an ongoing debate, and there's no real answer to that question yet. Your show is one of the few places where it's even discussed. We're seeing our Constitution disappear without even a discussion, except on Freedom Watch. And it's not a Democrat or a Republican thing or a left or a right thing. You'll remember a number of years ago that Ted Kennedy's name was on a terrorist list. Right, He's right. a Democrat. So Rand Paul, the, it's heartbreaking when you see 
if, if a United States senator is treated like this, it's very discouraging for the rest of us. We voted for him. He's our representative. We chose him. We right. didn't vote for the TSA. Right. And to see him helpless in their hands is very discouraging. Switching gears, Doug, and I want to talk to you in your capacity as a senior advisor to Congressman Ron Paul. Uh, does he have a path to the nomination? And if he does, explain it to us. Well, uh, it's delegates. There are more than 2,000 delegates to the Republican National Convention. Uh, less than 50 of them have been chosen. And until that is mathematically certain, yes, he has a path. It's a very complicated. There are four candidates now. And uh, it, normally it doesn't happen. There, there's no brokered convention in modern days because the delegates are not as bound to their candidates as they were in the past. And they tend to stampede when one gets in the lead. But we now are going very deep into this contest uh, without a clear winner. So Ron Paul will be a player and he will have influence. And there is no path to the nomination or the presidency without Ron Paul, without his young people, without the independence he brings, without the Hispanics. I don't know if you saw this last poll, uh, Judge, but it's pretty remarkable. 50% of the Hispanics in Florida in the Republican Party support Ron Paul. Mm. So he's bringing new people, freedom-loving people, into the Republican Party. There's no path to the White House without him, for sure. Doug Weed, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, 